we as Christians gather. Why do we gather? Well, for one thing, to be a church literally means to be those called out. Ekklesia, the Greek word that means that was later translated church, it means to be called out. Called out of what? Called out of the world. Called out of darkness. Called out of our backgrounds. Called out of our individual focuses into a collective focus on the Lord. Called out of isolation and into community, called out of brokenness and into healing, called out of sin patterns and into righteousness, called out of our mono-ethnic understanding of the world and into a multi-ethnic understanding, into a multi-ethnic, multi-generational community. Why does God do this? First and foremost, God does this because God is a community within himself. All right? We are deeply Trinitarian as a people. As we read the Bible, God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is true Christian faith, that we worship one God in three persons, and three persons in one God, without confusing the persons or dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is still another, but there is one Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, equal in glory and co-equal in majesty. Amen. We are Trinitarian. God himself is a community. Three people, one God. It's a divine mystery. If you're looking for it to make sense... What we're supposed to do with that is to worship this beautiful three-in-one God. We don't boil him down. We don't put him in a box. We allow him to blow our boxes up and then put us back together. Our job is not to control God or or fully comprehend God. It's just to draw a circle around him, to to fully encapsulate him. Instead, what we should try to do or aspire to do is apprehend God. Can we just grab onto him? Can we know something of him? And can we allow that to then pull us along and change our lives, pull us in a new direction? God is Trinity. He is within himself a community, and he designs people like him to be in community. The first man that he created was alone, and he knew it, and he felt it, and God looked at him and said, yeah, bro, it's not good for you to be alone. Yeah. So I'm going to build a community for you. Man, meet woman. Start to make some stuff together, including babies. This is a good thing. Now, if you're single in the room, that does not mean that you are broken or incomplete. It means that you need others in your life. That's all it is. We're going to talk more about that next month, right, Pastor Sheena? We're going to talk about singleness and all sorts of stuff. God made it, God's made a community and makes us to be in community. From the first verses in our scripture, he's building a community, a community to know him. As we gather, we know God. We know God in community. We know the God of community in community. Community is like this very, like, happy buzzword these days, and it normally means good things. Oh, I've got community. Do you, know what, do you know what my experience is? Is that when I'm in community, there are people that disagree with me. When I go to the Museum of Natural History in community with my family, everybody wants to look at different things, and yet we also have to stay together, and there's these conflicting ideas going on within the little tiny community of five called my family. And the same thing happens as our community grows. There's different focuses. There's different expressions. There's different emphases. There's different things that people want to look at or go and serve or go and do. And the challenge is to allow the diversity of expression and gifts and talents and beauty that God has placed in us to be expressed in a singularity called a church, Every Nation NYC. And there's a tension in this. And that tension is not a bug. It's a feature. The tensions of church are not a bug, they're a feature. Because if all of us did what we always wanted to do, it would not make good people. It would make broken people, selfish people, tiny despots of our own broken kingdoms. And God is not doing that. He's reviving us, transforming us, and conforming us to his will so that by God's grace, he would be the head of this church And we could gather in together and be part of that. God's been doing it through Eden. He does it again through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, building now a multi-generational people. 
that he gathers to himself out of the nations to be a blessing to the nations. He does it again in Exodus, gathering his people together. Now, not just an individual, but an entire nation out of another nation. Why? To be a blessing to the nations. And now, as, individu- as, as people, modern church, he gathers us from our backgrounds and from our places and stations and families and individual focuses into the church body so that we can be a blessing to the nations. God has been building a people from day one, and the church is the modern expression of that, whereby we are built together as living stones to be a temple of God where the Holy Spirit can dwell in New York City. You are a holy people, a royal people, a priesthood (laughs) unto God, sent sent to New York City to represent God to the city and the city back to God, to intercede for New York to the Lord, and to demonstrate the goodness and mercy and grace of God out to the city. It's a high call. It's a holy call. And it's one that we cannot do as individuals, but we must do together. Amen. In a local church, in a local body. 